and L. Yeah. This is a match for the ages. Oskaka ended up beating Tyson. What, what back then was one of the most mind-blowing, intense semifinal. 15. The cost of gasoline in Los Angeles was $3.13 per gallon. Whew. The newest iPhone was the iPhone 6. The Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement was announced by trade ministers of 12 countries. <laughs> Cool. Really, really A-bar? <laughs> really bad? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I remember from 2015. I love me some Trans-Pacific Partnership. Forsen still streamed Hearthstone. How about that? <laughs> yeah. That puts it into context. Back well, then. so the price of gas in Los Angeles right now is like 350 Is it? I thought it was like, I thought it was actually dropping. It was, it's been dropping, but oh, a lot that's of the places. National, that's the national gas price. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but where I live in the Inland Empire, I fell off for like 298. Wow. <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and focus back in onto uh, this series for round four. This is Live Live. We've been casting some of the matches that were recorded around yeah. the tavern to uh, pick up where Raven and Derek left off. But this shift, it'll be Derek and Raven picking up after us. This is As such it a should treat. be. As it should be. <laughs> Put them in their place. <laughs> That's right. When TJ summons Master's Call, the three British casters, you, you can discover one of them, but if they all show up in the studio, you, you draw them all. <laughs> uh, oh, man. What? Just, we need to get you a horn. And then when you summon Master's Call, the three, three British casters come over. Yeah, that's, that's basically how it is. Uh, it's true. TJ is a caster, host, and also talent manager for the ACT. So. I do. I clean up after them in the talent room. I was kaka. Thrown away master's call. This is something I was talking about a lot with Admirable. And there's so much debate right now about mulligan statistics, about you know whether or not it's correct to do this or that, or the hold to throw. Um, and you know, one thing for sure is that Oskaka is a deep thinker. This guy, whenever you whenever you see him make a play, he, even if it's a mistake. He has a lot of logic that goes behind it, even if it's like, oops, I actually forgot to count for one thing. But um, he was one of the people who actually originally roped a lot by playing very slow because yeah. he was just a very meticulous thinker. Get ready for him to think about this candle shot for at least another 10 seconds. Well, the, the timer, that also <laughs> used to be a full turn back now in 2015. It's, now it's less. Now it's less. More pressure on you that turn one. Oh, Skycar just called me out. I was like, he's going to think about it for another 10 seconds. He's like, Screw TJ. Wasn't 2015 also when Tavern Brawl released in Hearthstone? I don't know. I think so. I don't know. I don't. I don't have my phone. Admirable actually left his phone at home, <laughs> so, so like... we can't, can't. We can't contact him. He's like, "Hey, I need to jam some Hearthstone in my free time." <laughs> while I'm while I have like a two hour break, so I'm like, "Okay, you can use my phone." <laughs> How am I supposed to research the dankest of memes if I don't have access to my smartphone, or TJ? This is 20. This is 2015. Or above that. Oh, TJ has a phone. Great. I do. Uh, but. You should let Wyatt Chang know. Uh, I have a rare condition uh, called fat thumbs. Ooh. Yeah. Plural. Yes, they both are. Oh, ah, okay. Uh, Look well, at this guy with symmetrical thumbs. It's very, it's very difficult for me to Google things. <laughs> I don't think that's actually a registered ailment on the ADA or whatever they call it. I, I have to use a 60 inch high-definition television as my smartphone because <laughs> it's the only thing my fingers can can touch accurately let's go all right the producer just told me that the, the first uh, tavern brawl was in june 17 2015 they're just trying to rub Woo! it into my face that my thumbs can't go very fast i swear guys there's a game of hearthstone happening between two of the most storied like like players with incredible legacy What's this guy? But we'll been check it with them just a little bit. What's this guy coming up to? Since you really want to know? Uh, I do. He's been trading cryptocurrency and getting insanely rich. Wow. <laughs> so, the, the most successful Hearthstone world champion to date. Well, I mean, there is. How can we forget our Lord and Savior, Artos? Yeah, he's he's gone on to do some great things. 
<laughs> okay, let's actually cast some Hearthstone. Oskaka started off with an explosive trap against Dire Mold. Do you think it's that important to stop their one drop, TJ? And, I mean, this freezing trap against uh, Henshclan Thug completely warranted. And I like even this small feint of potentially attack. He's like, oh, I don't know if I want to attack. Do I want to attack? Obviously, he's trying to stop it. And then if Tice can read into it, he can use his Saucy deckhand and respond. Now, how, how should, do, you, do you like that Dire Mole and the Explosive Trap? Because it does feel like it has some uses, especially if you have like other things to pick it apart. But is it that important, do you think, TJ? Well, this was before he had Spellstone. Right, mm. that's true. So that's another thing to account in. And sometimes you'll throw out a trap just to get that Spellstone online and get, get it trucking away. What um, a read. Whoa! Read him like a book! Oh, he just read him like it's 2015. Well, no, because he lost. If he read well, him like I it's mean, 2015, he would have checked with the dagger first. I mean, he won. <laughs> Actually, Tice has a very infamous misplay of specifically like that kind of scenario. I think he has Swashburg, or he played a freezing trap against yeah. a Swashburglar, and he was the hunter and opponent was playing a rogue. Yeah, if we were to make, uh, you know, like baseball card-esque cards for Hearthstone players, Tice's weakness would be secrets. Okay. There's been many times where I've seen the one thing that Tice does poorly, which he doesn't even do it that poorly. It's just when you're nitpicking his play, that's what happens is playing around secrets. Yeah. Even in Taiwan, in the All-Stars event, we saw him have some questionable secret play. Um, again, I forgot who he, he was playing against, but... He had a, an opportunity for lethal, but kind of miscounted Was the secrets and ended up trading in more damage. It could have been Hoy. Mm. But, I mean, Ty still got third at that event, so shout out, I mean, to him. Like I, don't I wouldn't know, even I call don't, it a weakness. I don't even know how this guy does it. Like, I would call it the only area of improvement. So while Hoskaka traveled the world and became a Bitcoin millionaire, Tice ended up starting his streaming career right after the 2015 World Championship, and now yeah. is basically one of the top three volume streamers on the entire Twitch site. And he juggles that while competing. Tice has not missed a single playoffs or world championship qualifier since 2014. This guy's been doing it for his fifth year now. And it's just like, you know, people are still like, ah, he's washed up, he's just a streamer. It's like, no, man, this guy qualifies in the hardest region, still goes to tournaments, and he's he's won like an Aston Martin this year. And he gets Wind Fury on his... Uh, is Fabby Bird, but he didn't get anything. But Dan, he doesn't play around secrets. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Tice has a great stream, by the way. If you love positivity, enthusiasm, definitely go check it out. Yeah. And uh, Oskaka is under so much pressure that even if he stabilizes, it might be a little bit too late here. To my side. Okay. Uh, kind of helps. Uh, does it? No. Problem is that there's the Vile Spice Slayer with the Argent Squire, and that secret actually doesn't do anything. Tice doesn't know that. He's but okay, he can no. have a pretty good guess because yeah. he's already seen a few of the uh, attack phase slash. You just, yeah, you just attack the face with the dagger instead. So that way you're not. Uh... This is definitely an order check. Yeah. yeah. And he's... look at that. Ain't no sweat for the highest earner in Hearthstone history. And that's going to be a game one victory for Tice, and a pretty crucial one, too, because Odd Rogue needs to be able to snipe those decks that are a little bit slower, and mid-range hybrid hunter, form. hot form from Canada. That's right. Uh, yeah, I remember because I was casting that BlizzCon. Oh, wait. <laughs> no one to talk about that, yeah. TJ, of course, was snubbed from the casters list. Instead, we had pretty much every other Hearthstone streamer. We had Crip, Amaz, Raynad, even Hyped join in on the casting back then. Yeah, so then I made up my vow from that point on to join Blizzard. <laughs> from the inside. And choose Take the casters the for the rest of eternity. <laughs> <coughs> wow. You okay, Dan? Yeah. You gonna be just... all right? It just turns out that, you know, TJ joining Blizzard was a giant vendetta for him to take down Hearthstone <laughs> casters one by one. We have turned our uh, what really happened to Robert strength. Wing, TJ? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get that bow tie, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's another underground meme. Shout out to Rob Wing, by the way. Hope he's doing well. Uh, Oskaka's going to play Control Priest up against Even Warlock. This is a matchup that uh, Even Warlock can struggle with if they don't have enough pressure early on, but that 
turn three mountain giant looks good for dice so far uh, the reason being is that even warlock can just get pinged down a lot they love yo-yoing across that halfway uh the 50 yard line if you will <laughs> Going down to the to make a four mana seven seven. Uh, going down, going all the way up to the uh, thirty yard, fifty yard lines. But how do you break it up into into increments of? It's a half. Your half half life. <coughs> so you, you get seven seven. So sixteen would be the thirteen point or the fifty three point seven five yard line. Yeah. Okay. I like to float Repeating, around. of course. I like to float around the uh, 14 health range, so I have a little wiggle room, which is the uh, 46.25 yeah, well, uh, yard lines. That's strictly suboptimal. Yeah. Um, so Tice already has his threat checked. In fact, he's staring at a bigger threat on the opposite yes. side that Destroy. is not conveniently answered. He could spell breaker his own minion trade. He can spell breaker the 8 4. He could also. That's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, I was like, uh, he could also see if he, he could wants... help. He could hellfire and die. <laughs> well, I was saying that he could also like, you know, be a little bit more passive, but just like playing a four four of some kind. Yeah. Oh, the ballsy play. I've been seeing Tice take a lot of big time risks these days. Yeah. And you know, I think it's been leading to some high risk, high reward scenarios that's helped him go really deep in some tournaments. And I think, you know, that kind of risk taking is often what sets apart some players from others. Because I know a lot of people, it's it's a lot easier to cave into the safety, you know, the mindset of like, oh, I need to be really cautious here, like trade, trade, mm. blah, blah, blah. Like, Tice has no fear. And maybe that's has some correlation with why he's the highest earner in Hearthstone. Well, I'm by no means a Hearthstone coach, which is weird because that's like sort of a job title that casters have. But. I always thought it's best to learn Hearthstone by taking the riskiest plays, because if you don't take risks, you'll never know what punishes you. You'll never know what games could have been won if you had taken those risks. Yeah. Mark Twain once wrote, I'd rather have lost love than never have loved at all. Damn, we're not talking about love. Well, I'm, we're talking about Hearthstone, and I love Hearthstone. Whoa. I'd rather have... I'd rather have not top deck than... <laughs> Something profound and poetic. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Mark Twain. <laughs> You're not. Loved him as the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> what? Not even close. <clears throat> yeah. Push the damage. Double Mountain Giant. And it's the turn before... The psychic scream. Is there a mass hysteria in, in Oskaka's deck list? Uh, mm. And that heal is, gambit is not paying off for Oskaka because if it was a little bit lower health, actually, I don't know. If it was lower health, it'd still be at five and you couldn't clear it with Dustbreaker. Does Oskaka heal must the 8 7 again to draw a card? What could he even draw? This is supposed to be a good matchup. There's for no Kaka. max hysteria. Oh man. I mean, it's not. It's not fairly common. It's just one of those things you just <clears throat> keep in mind. Yeah. And that risky play from Tice. I mean, the, the reason why we say it's risky is just because you're always very, very vulnerable to some of the removals. But if, you know, if you know Oskaka's deckless and you know that he can't punish you that much for it, it's a great call. This is uh, rough. So Oskaka could draw cards, but he already kind of has all the cards he needs, to be honest. Like, he's got Psychic Scream, Anduin, and Alex Straza. He doesn't need much else. So he could actually just heal himself and stall. And I think that's the right play here. Yeah, but now he's going to be on the back foot for a while, because even though he has Psychic Scream next turn, that gives Tice a free turn of development afterwards that he'll still have to deal with. Now he has Shadow Branduin to follow that up, but what if it's not? five attack or more minion dead? What if it has less than five attack? Well, it won't die. Hmm. Astute. Thank you. Am I hired again for the next job? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
You're watching Hearthstone. <laughs> There's the, I think we've hit our inside joke quota for the day, TJ. Please. I don't want to have to go back and like that one's an explain outside joke. every single one. Yes. It's just, you, you have to have watched Hearthstone in 2015, which we took a throwback oh, to. Oh, that is so true. In 2015, Admirable was not casting anything like... Like, there were, there's no HCT, so Admiral wasn't catching. No. He was catching PvP Live. PvP Live, the Hearthstone Pro League. Yeah. And his instructions was to be as epic as possible, which he took to the to the umpteenth degree. And so he used to sign out every outro, like, with some really intense one-liners. And one of the, the peak of it was, you're watching Hearthstone. And so whenever we meme admirable in the backstage we sometimes say that just yeah so it's not an inside joke it's actually just a throwback <laughs> to 2015. <laughs> well played tj you, you successfully out memed me all is right in the world <laughs> uh, even when you're not cast with him you can't destroyed. stop picking on him mm. poor guy Picking on him. People would think Sato's like the biggest bully out of all the <laughs> casters. TJ is actually the biggest bully out of all of them. We bully each other. <laughs> That's just how, how we work. How often do we bully you? <laughs> often. I bully myself. Oh, look at this play. I love this play. See, the shot. I foreshadowed this. I didn't call it. I just yeah. foreshadowed it. Well, you're, you're talking about the possibility of it. And it yeah. is fantastic spot recognition from Ty saying, you know what? Oskaka took so much time uh, thinking about stuff, he probably has a really good Shadow Reaper Anduin set up, and I don't want him to t kill this my bring, Reaver. This brings me back as well. If we wow. recall back to the 2015 Ooh. semifinal Starstone World Championship with Tyson Oskaka playing a Freeze Mage Mirror, they were outmaneuvering each other by pinging their own face to make it so that they uh, protected themselves from yeah. burn damage with Ice Block being popped. Counterintuitive plays. That's what yeah. makes it really interesting. And now Tice has another choice. Oh my goodness. Round and round we go. Now, to be fair, I believe he played two hooked reavers in a row and got like and got screamed twice in a row. But the Lich King here kind of goes a little bit against what Tice was trying to do. But the nice thing is that it curves into uh, Blood River Golden in the fall in the following turns as well. So Tice actually has some real choices at this point. Yeah. I, th I think we're just reloading with a couple more four attack minions. Yeah. It's definitely not nearly as powerful, though, because now Oskaka has access to Alex Straza. Yeah, but Alex Straza presents an awkward situation because Tice can just push face damage again, play Lich King, and then if Oskaka plays Shadowy Brand, and it kills off his own Alex Straza, which cuts off some of the value of it. True. But also consider this, Oskaka has double Mind Blast, so if he sets up some kind of Shadow Reaper Anduin play and they able to clear things, he should also be able to wrap up the game soon. That's why Tice hasn't been life tapping. He's one step ahead. Uh, well, Oskaka can go for the Cabal Shadow Priest play with the Twilight Acolyte. He could steal the Hooked Reaver, remove it from the Demon Pool. The other option is to Alex draws yourself to 15 and then use that to fight back on the board for a little bit of time before you Anduin. And I think that's okay to Alex draws yourself if you end up choosing to go for it because most likely you're not going to be able to safely Anduin for a while. You're going to constantly be really scared of like double Hellfire and Bone Mare. So you're just going to most likely respond after your opponent plays a big threat with their Anduin. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm Tice. He's feeling... Ooh. Well... No, I like this, because then if you... Uh, no, because Shadow Reaper Anduin gets yeah, up by armor, so you're Brand. not setting up for anything. Yeah. Maybe he makes a... No, I don't think there's any point to making the trade, either. No, you go face. Yeah, because Shadow Reaper Anduin kills off the Alex Charles anyway. Oh, oh, missing this 8 damage when your opponent's at 11 feels so bad, but there's also a possibility that Tice could get cheesed. But how would he get cheesed? Let me see. There's no silence in the deck. There's no Fire Tree Witch Doctor, so he can't pick up a silence. If you play Shadow Reaper Anduin, there's no way he pushes through because it kills off the Alex Draza as well. Oh, you're right, you're right. He can't say Twilight Acolyte, Cabal Shadow Priest, push eight and then Mind Blast to kill him because right, he's right. at a healthy enough life total. Oh, and that costs more mana than he has. Yep, and then going, uh, playing Shadow Reaper Anduin, 
Well, Scott can go up to maximum of, let's see, six from the Divine Him, plus five. So he can go up to 14. Must consider. But I think he wants to go for that ping because then he sets up for lethal the following turn should there be no healing. But he, then he's looking at, he's at he's at eight life and Tice has four damage on the board. Oh, that is so close. Yeah. But that I is think really, really close. That would require Tice to have two Hellfires to kill him. I wonder. Yep. Two Hellfires or a Dread Infernal and Hellfire. Oh, Dread Infernal plus Hellfire. Or... That's it. Yeah, because he didn't play a Lich King, so he couldn't have the... He didn't play a Lich King. Only has one Bone Mare. It might be a gut check time for Oskaka. Or is he going to take the safe play of trying to be the light has been a great. little bit more cautious? But I think it's time for a Death Knight battle because Tyson. Oh, yes! That is some 2015 World Championship plays right there. Oh, what a draw from Tice! What, you told me to throw that was, back like it's 2015. That was intense! What a I, game! I back thought that and in my chest. Forth. And like, I, I, think it, I think it was just correct on both sides all the way through. Yeah. It was very well played. And that's what you like to see. We called the outs from Tice. I think even with games very different when you don't play for like a year and a half. Yeah, but a lot of those skills just stay with you, right? The ability to read a meta, the ability to just play at a high level. Oh yeah, um, it, it, it sticks with you. So it, it kind of feels like at Job at done. some point, if the game becomes interesting enough to you again, it's like you're you're getting to reuse old skills, which is always fun. Well, uh, this is going to be a little bit of an awkward start here for Tice because he doesn't have a one drop and he is on the play. And Oskaka has options, to say the least. And this this hand right here is deceptively tricky. I think there's a lot of ways that you could play it. I mean, there's people who save their coin to try and really push out like a rush minion to get... Um, you know, the, the trades on board, or maybe they try to pr prioritize the Cracking Razor Maw. But one thing is certain, early game board dominance is king in any hunter versus hunter matchup. Yeah, it might be a little more swing now than it once was, but actually, no, I take that back because no, no, nobody's really running Unleash the Hounds. Mm -hmm. So now here's here's like an option. Do you utilize the coin now? Because it's not like you're exactly coining for anything amazing in the like like you know a, a three drop or you're not coining into like some kind of high mean like you did back in the old days. So now you have the opportunity to develop a three two with a cracking razor maw and use the coin for a candle shot or a lynx as a backup. And all these options are pretty good. Living Spores increases the power on the board. Poison is just is a very clean snipe, and you can save your coin. And then Divine Shield keeps the beast off the board, but it's probably the weakest overall. Yeah, but as you mentioned, board control is the name of the game. So getting just more stuff on the board, more attacks, very valuable. And Tice has access to one of the best cards currently in Hunter, which is uh, Caster's Call. Do it, TJ. No. Well, we'll revisit that again sometime <laughs> later. But the problem is he gives up so much tempo. Master's Call is fantastic as, like, a late game option. Mm -hmm. And, you know, honestly, it's still great on turn three against slower decks. Against another Hunter who already has five power on the board. Oh, man. I, I mean, if I'm Tyson, I might even be tempted to just start removing the board right now like with kill command on the three two just to stop taking damage because the thing is you don't know if you can guarantee that three two to not hit one more time after this time. oh but the spring paw pickup very nice with his own crackling razor maw there's actually yep. just not that many beasts to hit well there's like you know the tundra rhino there's the scavenging hyena so it's like there's it's, a possibility that Tice would subject have missed, nine and subject nine. You, you would have, you could have missed and just hit a little bit more expensive minions. Wind Fury. Look at my speed. That is going to be a lot of damage coming in. And Tice is in big trouble. Hold on to the links. I mean, 
This is kind of an argument that I was talking about. Like, do you want to kill Command preemptively to stop the damage? But, I mean, I don't blame Tice for his logic. He wanted to invest the mana now so he'd have more options for a play in the following turn. Mm -hmm. So if he takes Volcanic Might, he can use the other links to trade in. If he takes Divine Shield, eh, it's about the same. He's left with a 1-1. One, one. Actually, it's it's worse because... Yeah, Poisonous and plus one, take, plus 1 yeah. are pretty much the same. Yeah. I'm trying to like rationalize, like, can he justify taking a Divine Shield? But I don't think so. Probably want to get that Dire Mole developed onto the board. Lynx has Rush, so you could always use it immediately when you need to have it for that one damage impact. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Dire Mole needs the turn to get set up. And now you get to see how Master's Call is very powerful because when you already have that board, it just makes it extremely potent to develop into all these smaller cheap options. Yeah, and Tyson's going to be spending most of his turns playing reactive, where Oskaka's going to be able to play proactive. So, right. so if I'm Oskaka, I'm not that worried about Spellstone. My opponent uh, has not even played a secret yet. What's the worst possible play outside of that? If Let's say let's say Oskaka kills off this Cracking Razor Moth. Does he have to trade into this Dire Mole? Can he push three damage? I guess he loses his plant. Plants it's are, worth thinking plants are about. important, Dan. It's worth thinking about, and I think he's thinking about it right now, too. If he does... All right, well, I think now it's time to go to the uh, Spellstone plan. He can trade off the Crackling Razor Mall, play Double Secret this turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a trade is pre you know preventing the usual stuff like scavenging hyena and animal companion from like with leoc for example to really ruin him yeah so, and i think oskaka recognizes that he's already he's already in a pretty significant damage lead you know we just crossed the 30 yard line <laughs> oh my god we did Tice may have to settle for a field goal here. <laughs> yeah, well, as long as he doesn't get the, 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 the kicker for the Bears, he would be all right. <laughs> oh, some people, some production crew are wincing. They must have made the wrong bet. <laughs> Go Eagles! <laughs> oh, they are pissed. Oh, I better run soon. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> I'm not going to protect you, Dan. I can't move very fast in these suspenders. Whew. That was a little nugget for all the sports ball fans out there. Sports ball! <laughs> all right, well, it's Freezing Trap and it's Wandering Monster. The Freezing Trap is a little interesting um, for, like, how does those cocka play? I don't think he'll ever truly read into it unless he can make a... Okay, with, actually, if he sees this is Freezing Trap, then he should know Spellstone's coming up next because you never want a Freezing Trap into, say, like, you know, a plant 1-1. One -one. That just does nothing. Yeah. And you know that the minion has a high likelihood of being removed. So if you know Spellstone's coming down, maybe you set up, like, the Tundra Rhino preemptively so that you can just, like, play beasts. But you don't even have that many beasts. You have yeah. the Spirit, the Spring Paw, and the Lynx, which already have Rush. Yeah. This is a little awkward for us, guys. Don't charge them. That's true. Charge is pretty important. Charge means that can it, go, it can go face the turn that it's played. Mm. Instead of just into a minion. But I think that's really his only play. What else is he gonna do? He's the he's yeah. the, sort of the aggressor in the in the state of the match currently. And if he just plays Master's Call, he doesn't guarantee himself a good play to follow that up with with just two mana. Mm -hmm. And this is still really scary in its own right because now the big problem with Tice playing Spellstone is that if Goskaka has a scavenging hyena plus anything <laughs> that can that can increase its damage, that's pretty much just the game right there on the spot. Yeah. I mean, his own Spellstone is not bad. But this didn't end up being as massive of a power play as I think Oskaka was hoping for. Yeah, there's quite a few options here for him. But he, he can still Master's Call, which would have a high likelihood of drawing the Hyena. It's not enough mana.
Hit me, TJ. What, what are we going to do? I don't know. You don't want to set up Deathstalk or Rexar because I think you still want to hold on to the hero power because you want to push damage. I like all face here. <laughs> Just force your opponent to trade. You have a snake trap up and then you have spellstone. Make it difficult for your opponent to figure out what yeah. they want to do. Also has explosive trap up as well. So Tysus just decides yeah. to go counter aggressive, which wouldn't be very smart because Oskaka has a big health lead. Then he could Deathstalk or Rexar to clean up the board. Yeah. But that applies on both sides. Tice gets to clear the board and Deathstalk or Rexar. Goes up to 17. Oh. Oh, mama. It's so juicy. And now we all of a sudden going to be in a Deathstalker Rexar battle. Maybe. I mean, this guy still does have the life lead, but he's losing the board. Yeah, I, th I think it might have to be Deathstalker Rexar on his own side. But then he's he, but then he's giving initiative back over to Dice. If Oskaka just ends up playing Deathstalk or Rexar, Tice gets to make the first Zombies, and then Oskaka's playing on the the back foot for for most of the for pretty much the rest of the game. And he also used one of his most powerful Enders, right? He has one Tundra Rhino, and he used it. Yeah, whereas Tice still has his. <clears throat> Is there a tracking he can get that would change anything? Does he have, say, Unleash the Hounds? He does not. He does not know. Deathstalk or Rexar it is. Oskaka does have the fully juiced spellstone to be able to follow it up. So if Tice invests a lot of mana into a big zombie, then either he's not able to play it this turn or has to play secrets. Oskaka's going to take a big board advantage and still has a significant health lead. So Tice draws his own Tundra Rhino, TJ. So are you thinking Master's called Tundra Rhino? Uh, or, or trap Tundra Rhino, or maybe maybe okay. Hold on, because if you if you mash this call and you set up, then Tundra Rhino gets a lot stronger. So you might be right. Mash this call, Tundra Rhino might be really good. Subject Nine itself is also very solid. Just yeah, a lot of the secrets out of your deck. Still a big body. Get the surprise of the Tundra Rhino as well. Yeah, it's out of range of flanking strike, although you do know Lynx is in the hand. And that one extra damage means that four health minions are very much within reach. Three secrets. Two. Just two. Now, what's interesting about this is Tice went for a value play, and now Oskaka. Now initiative is over to him. What is he going to do with it? He has the ability to make a zombie. He can also go very wide on the board with the spell stones. But it's scary because when your opponent uses Master's Call and they play Tundra Rhino and Scavenging Hyena, that's how you get counter pushed and that's how you lose. Yeah. Because he doesn't actually have a good contingency plan for that. So what he could end up doing is going for a zombies first to see if he can use use it for a reactive play. So he's, let's say he picks up the, the Bloat Bat plus a Vile Brute Skitterer. That's nine mana that allows him to answer a board. Another option for him is to simply extend as far on, onto the board as possible. And, uh, you know, pony up, if you will. <laughs> Tess doesn't really have the option to go aggressive as if Oskaka just plays out the Spellstone here because that's 17 life. Oskaka probably looking for burst damage here with the kill, kill command. command. There's also a case for Dire Frenzy on the links too. But looks like Oskaka. <laughs> oh, putting the big boy pants on. Going here. in for the kill. It's a tough decision. And Tice picks up the Scavenging Hyena. Ooh. Tundra Rhino. Hyena, Springpaw, Links. This is looking very good for our Dutch player. The only thing he has to follow it all up, though, is a bunch of secrets. So that may not be the best, but... He's got Zombies. Uh, build the Beast Hero Power. 
So he could still sew together some beasts and try to concoct himself a win condition that way. But the media concern for Tice is to one, not die. I'm actually a little curious on how Tice is going to do this. Is he going to trade or is he going to push? And I think he's trying to find the perfect balance. First of all, he has to consider that as Kaka tracking. And he has the ability to potentially have double kill command. So if he's at 17, he doesn't want to be... He doesn't want to leave nine power on the board because he could die. So yeah. he has to remove at least two of these wolves and the hyena. But in order to do that, he has to trade with his scavenging hyena. That's not great. So he makes the trades. Does put, kind of protect his Tundra Rhino. But I guess Kill Command would answer it. Yeah, Kill Command or just, you know, Lynx. Yeah. Deals most of this. So now Osaka again has choices. And this is something that I feel like Midrange Hunter has has gotten like a complete breath of fresh air compared to how we were playing it for the past year and a half, where it's like Midrange Hunter still existed, but it was fairly linear. But Deathstalker Rexar and all these different like things like Master's Call and how you use it, and more importantly, how you build your deck around it, yeah, has given a lot more depth on like, do I play it now or do I go for like a Zombies because I know my percentage chance for a bigger threat is here. I wonder. So we have the ability to Scavenging Hyena, Lynx, Dire Mole, and Freezing Trap this turn. That seems pretty reasonable, because Subject 9 is not going to draw anymore, so it's just like kind of an awkward card for your opponent to deal with. And your opponents use Double Spring Paw and Lynx, so they would have to... And Tundra Rhino, right? So there's not many ways that they can uh, punish a Freezing Trap from hand. Yeah, you could also go Kill Command instead. Oh, Kill Command, yes. Because even if you Freezing Trap, yep. then you could have a cheap piece in hand, which he knows there's a cheap... Potentially a cheap piece from Master's exactly. Call that he keeps for the Freezing Trap. I like it. This dance back and forth, TJ. Bring now. This is 2015 Hearthstone. Yes, it is. It really is. Where it's like any wrong mistake in a, in a hunt, mid range hunter uh, matchup can cost you the game. He does have Bloatbat and Gashapod possibilities, and it looks like that's exactly what he took. Yep. In fact, he can kill his own zombies with Kill Command on his uh, Bloatbat if the situation calls for it. Whew. But since it has Taunt and Oskaka doesn't have any Silence's effects naturally, it would have to be something from Zombies. He's just going to play it out now to clear Unless, the board. Wait, Oskaka, had play, did he play his Crackling Razor Maws yet? He played one. He's played one. I think he might have even played two. I, I know Tice played it, so it's just like a little bit hard to keep track. But the point is, he can also adapt so that way the stays. Oh no, alive. he has played two. Yeah, I think yeah. he has. But if he picks up a Cracking Razor Maw. Choosing a beast. None of these are good. I think he might pick Loose Specimen just for the raw stats. It's a 6 6, and there's no other friendly minions that are going to survive. Yeah. So that's five mana. So if you pick Iron for a Grizzly, it'll be a nine nine. Whew, that is that's really scary if you're Tice, because then you might die to one kill command. Oh, another thing to consider is the secret too. Tice played Venom Strike Trap. And Oskaka's oh. seen a handful of traps, so he should be able to narrow it down to either this snipe, uh explosive or snake trap. And I think snake trap or the Venom Strike Trap are the most likely. But he can't just not attack, because then everything he builds is going to die of the blow bat eventually. That's true. Unless he finds some way to silence it, but he'll just have to keep zombiesing over and over again and let the board tension build up. So what he could do is set up... Oh, yeah. The, so the... I don't know, man. It's really complicated. I think trading and playing the, the giant loose specimen is probably his best bet. Except the Venom Strike Trap introduces a big problem to that. So that's the unfortunate side effect. He knew this was a possibility. Ooh. Skaka got the plant in just in time. I like this holding the Dire Mole too, in case he needs it for a cheap kill command activator. Tice picks up a flanking strike. 
Ty's starting to get a pretty big resource advantage. He's one zombies behind, but he's got an opportunity to pick apart the board here. And if he gets a zombie that's impactful ooh. on the board this turn, ooh, Halazi. Halazi. Halazi the Lynx. Does he have a beast on board already? He does. Yeah, he does. He can adapt it to if he wanted to with Kraken Razor Maw. Halazi's great with stuff for Penguin as well. Yeah, because Halazi should just play more, and he did pick that. Mm hmm. Allows him to test for the secret, which is freezing trap, so he'll he'll uh, be able to freeze one of the Lynxes. If Lynxes, if that's the case. Yes. Even after that, he'll still be able to trade one in and favorably trade over the Leoc with the uh, Emperor Cobra. I think he's testing for secrets just to make sure, like, he doesn't get sniped, for example. Yeah. Well, also making room in his hand for more Lynxes. True that. Because he'll still be able to play another one, because this one's going to get frozen back. He's going to see that. You are correct. Oskakos doesn't even play a snipe. So that is uh, the case. Ice, full control. Oskaka does have the life lead, though. Twice as much, p practically. Scale. Ah, all very awkward. Yep. The Expensive value, stuff with, yeah. very, with no board effect, pretty much. And again. So he's just going to kind of have to play a big thing. He could play... He could play Subject 9 with the Young Dragonhawk and just kind of start dumping a little bit of the secrets, but also keep in mind the card count for their decks. There's not much left remaining on both sides. They've yeah. used a lot of their big stuff, their Spellstones, their Tundra Rhino. And, you know, you saw like Oskaka, for example, pass over his Dire Frenzy, and that helps him extend deep into the game. Yeah. But Tice is going to oh, take man. a big lead on board after this turn. Yeah, I think this might be a little bit too much for Oskaka. Because even just Tice's trades from here, from our perspective, we can see a trade with the Dire Mole, kill it with Poisonous, Flanking Strike the Secret, and then you have still a ton of mana left over. He's also drawn a Spellstone now. So he can push in for the kill potentially over the next two turns. Oh man, it's been a while since I've seen Tice this laser focused. He's going to first test the secret, sees that it's a minion related one, which is Venom Strike Trap, and should narrow it down pretty much to simply that one. Yep. If it's, yeah, if it's Snake or if it's uh, Venom Strike Trap, you should be fine because you'll be able to answer the Lynxes. And, uh, and if it's simply the Venom Strike Trap, you just kill it like you said. I think I honestly want to unload a Spellstone here. Yeah, that's not too bad of an idea because every minion's around the same power anyways. Yeah. And the Emperor Cobra does not line up very good statistically against all of them. So going for a big wide Spellstone, I, I like it. Yeah, he puts more power on the board, double kill command in hand. Oskaka needs basically a blow bat. Yeah. Out here, and he can't even get the rush blow bat. Okay, Cave Hydra. Skitterer. Okay, that takes. He wants a swamp leech. Mm. Yeah, but he needs to clear off this board. Yeah, if he had that rush, if he had the vicious scale hide, almost a completely different game once again, because then Tice has all his burn and finish. And this zombie should be able to clean up most of what Tice has. Tice has four damage remaining, plus two kill commands. Oh, also uh, interesting to note that uh, the snipe ends up not allowing Hokaka to take a minion, so that was very uh, nicely done too. Yeah, still a very impactful Oh yeah, uh, zombie there though, able to narrow it down. But I mean, we're starting to get to the point where Tice is going to push lethal damage. Some cheap beasts, which can be good. Also, stealth. Yeah, I like the stealth a lot. Cause it's very difficult for Oskaka to interact with it unless he picks up, like, another Cave Hydra situation. Yeah. And Rush, it would have to be Cave Hydra Rush again with enough tact to get through it. So he does just basically pick up the, the biggest possible thing.
And once again, Oskaka's got to rely on the zombies to get him through the situation. And Ty's looking to play out the links. I don't think it really matters. The only way it would matter if it's, if he needs the one mana beast to activate kill commands for some reason. But if he just needs double kill command, he has the three mana links to be able to do just that, so. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel here for Oskaka? Depends what's in that button. Yeah, he has enough mana to, to hero power and still do stuff, but if he wants to like flanking strike and play the spellstone, he needs to do that now. Play of Beetle's not bad. Ooh, but no rush. Yeah. So he could play the Beetle and Young Dragonhawk. That gives him five mana remaining. He can flanking strike. And I think that's death here for Oskaka, unless he just plays his big zombies that has Taunt. I still think it does. Yeah, very reasonable play here, but with double kill command, Tice already getting the fist pump. It took four years <laughs> in the making, TJ. We finally arrived to Tice's revenge for 2015 World Championship. He's done it. And we'll just have to resolve this best of three of five for another day. Well played. Save your calendars for four more years. In 2023, they'll battle it out again.